On Sunday night, the 53rd annual Folklorama kicked off. Going from August 4th through to the 17th, Folklorama offers Winnipeggers an opportunity to explore the world by visiting 38 pavilions spread out over two weeks. In the first week of Folklorama, there are 19 pavilions on display, inviting visitors to sample the traditions, food, and culture from such places as Belgium, Cuba, Ireland, and Japan, amongst many others. One of the highlights of the first week of Folklorama is the Israeli Pavilion. Located at the Rady Jewish Community Center at 123 Doncaster Street, called Shalom Square, the Israeli Pavilion has been part of Folklorama since the very beginning and has been treating audiences to the best in Jewish culture, food, and dance. And speaking of dance, the entertainment for Shalom Square is the Sarah Summer High Folk Ensemble, which consists of dancers, singers, and musicians. Since becoming the feature performers for the pavilion in 1977, the Chai Folk Ensemble has been wowing audiences with their talent, athleticism, energy, and joy in celebrating the best that Israeli dance and music have to offer. And joining me here in the Classic 107 studio, I am joined by four members of the Chai Folk Ensemble, dancers Samantha Waldman and Zachary Gordon, and singer and bass player Braden Ganetsky, and co-artistic director Sarah Summer. Hello to you all. Nice to have you here. Oh. Hi, Chris. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So here I, I have to confess for our listeners, I am right in my element. I was a member of Chai for more than 15 years and have played my fair share of shows at Shalom Square, both at the Rady JCC and back in the day when it was at the YMHA on Hargrave back in the 90s. Uh, I'm going to start out the conversation by asking, what does Chai mean? Chai um, is the Hebrew word for alive, um, and uh, in the Jewish culture, um, the letters that spell Chai also stand for the number 18, which is a special number uh, in our tradition. So um, all around, the significance of this group um, is really special and meaningful, um, and I think even especially this year, we're celebrating our 60th anniversary, so it really takes on a new meaning when we look back at the past 60 years and how we've maintained um, that energy and um, perpetuating the ensemble forward. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go around the room and I'll ask a question of all four of you. Uh, what made you want to audition for Chai and perform with them? And Sarah, I'll start with you. And this is sort of a no-brainer, I think. Sure. So for me, um, I actually grew up watching the ensemble basically since I was born. Um, both of my parents were in the ensemble uh, before I was born. Um, my grandmother was actually the founder of the group. Mm -hmm. um, so um, it was just something that I was always really passionate about and excited about as a young kid growing up I always envisioned myself uh, one day performing on that stage and so finally when I reached that age um, to audition I did and I was um, uh, thrilled to be performing I, I uh, performed as a singer for about 10 years uh, and vocal director in the group originally mm -hmm. and Braden how about you what made you want to join so I wanted to have a way to connect more with my community um, and continue uh, my passion for singing um, and it's very nice that uh, after two years of being in the group, I was asked to also become the bass player for the group. <laughs> and so now uh, I do both at the same time. And it's been uh, already, I think, nine years since I became the bass player. Uh, so in total, that's 11 years of being in the group. And it's uh, just it's a great time all around. Mm -hmm. Samantha, how about you? When you're like a dancer and you're also in the Jewish community, you kind of just like are expected to audition for Chai, which is what I did. I've been hearing about it since I was young and have always looked up to the Chai dancers. So I just kind of did what <laughs> was expected of me, but I enjoy it immensely. It's the highlight of my week to be at Chai rehearsals and mm -hmm. perform. Absolutely. Zach, how about you? Um, I danced competitively with Samantha uh, since we were 11, and her grandma has been pestering me to join the group uh, <laughs> for probably around that. Um, so it was only a matter of time before I, uh, I joined. It's, it's a blast, though. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, 2024, it's a big year for Chai. Uh, Sarah, you mentioned it uh, in passing. In, on November 9th, the group is going to be celebrating 60 years in an, as, an, as an ensemble at Club Regent in the Event Center. What does it mean to be such, to be part of such a milestone event? I'll ask a question to all of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, what does it mean? It is kind of 
like something that I still don't fully like comprehend the amount of like history from the high folk ensemble. I think that it's like present in kind of everything that we do from like the numbers that we get passed down and like wearing costumes that others have like worn before us. It's just like, it's very special to be a part of that history and kind of hopefully make history for the future, I guess. And Sarah, I'm interested in about your take on this. You've grown up with the group. Yeah, I think really like when you look at the number 60, like that is a huge accomplishment. And I'm I'm so, so proud to look back and see where we've come from um, and to see where we are now. And I'm just I'm so excited to see where we can go from here in the next 60 years. And um, I think it, I think we can only go up from here, honestly. Mm -hmm. um can, can you give us a little bit of history behind the group? We've talked about 60 years. How did, how did the group start? Yeah, so um, I mentioned um, the group was founded by my grandmother, who I'm also named after. Her name was Sarah Summer. Um, and she started the group as a way for um, young people in Winnipeg to celebrate and share their Jewish and Israeli culture and heritage. Um, and she was a dancer. She had a passion for dance. So um, she gathered um, a group of eight dancers who um, were peers of her children at the time. Um, and they practiced in her basement, um, eight dancers to a record player. And they would practice and perform locally at some cultural events. And then eventually they went on to some, some bigger performances as well. Um, and a few short years later, she um, actually did sadly pass away um, but this group has lived on um, after her passing and has just continued to grow um, into the group that it is today with I want to say over 30 performers and in, in all disciplines dance uh, band singing instrumentalists and singing um, and we have many professionals in the group as well so it's it's really exciting to see where where we've gone Mm -hmm. uh, Brayden, I'm going to ask a question of you. Uh, I know you've been in the group for several years. You're in the group uh, when, I, when I left. Uh, what is it that you look forward to most about performing at the Israeli Pavilion? I really enjoy getting up in front of the crowd and just sharing the music that I find so beautiful. Um, whether, uh, wh whether I'm featured in the song or not, I am just very... Uh, excited to be there and and sharing the music. I I, I get the the rush from being on stage of both singing and playing bass at the same time. And you know, one of them has to go on autopilot, and the other one has to be <laughs> <laughs> actually thinking about. But it's it's always very fun and exciting. I love folklorama. Mm, and Samantha, and Zach, how many? Is this your first folklorama? Or? This is my first folklorama. So mm -hmm. it's been a good experience. Um, this is my uh, second folklorama. Um, and I don't know, there's something just so special about, you know, all these people coming to the pavilion from their own different backgrounds and, you know, being able to show all this like joy with the, with the community, with everything. It's just so fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so Samantha, as your first folklorama, how was last night, your first time? It was a lot. It was overwhelming, tiring, but also like so just amazing and mm -hmm. I'm so excited to keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, when people think of Jewish dance and music, they very often think of klezmer, the Havana Gila thing. Um, but Chai, it performs music that you would hear in Israel uh, today. Uh, can the four of you talk about some of the numbers or sections that audiences can expect to see at the pavilion uh, this year? So my favorite piece that we are performing this year is the Jerusalem medley, which uh, does have some more traditionally Israeli music. Um, it starts off with uh, Yerushalayim Shel Zahav, Jerusalem of Gold, which is this absolutely beautiful, iconic song. If you know the song, it's it's quite iconic. Um, and then it speeds up and gets faster and we go into the more hora type music and it's just a very high energy, exciting, beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's your favorite part of the yes. show. Sarah, what, for you as co-artistic director, what kinds of things can people see? When you ask me to pick one, that's a really hard question. <laughs> Honestly, I I have the privilege. I get to sit back and watch every single show. And um, throughout the course of the week when we do, you know, upwards of 16 shows this week, every single show I find like a new favorite moment and, and something 
else that is so special that I that I really love. Um, what I especially love about our show this year um, is the way that I feel we authentically represent um, the music and culture of Israel. Um, you know, Israel is such a multicultural um, country. You have influences from all over the world because um, Israel has uh, taken in people, mm -hmm. um, uh, refugees facing persecution from all over the world. So we have, uh, just as Israel has in its society, all these multicultural influences in their food and their language and their culture. Um, in our music, we have that as well. We have influences from Yemen and from Morocco and from Eastern Europe and from the Balkans and Turkey and Greece and 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 you name it. And and that just really goes to show, um, it's it's a it's an authentic representation, I feel, of what you would get when you go to Israel. Yeah, it's a real melting pot mm -hmm. of all different kind of styles and kinds of music, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Samantha, how about you? Do you have a favorite moment in the show? I think my favorite piece to perform is um, Ali Breeder, just because it's very different from what we do. Like, the um, style is a lot more modern. It's like jazz, fossey inspired We have to wear hats and suspenders, <laughs> and it's just like... <laughs> So energetic and fun and is probably one of my favorite pieces. Yeah, and for our Classic 107 listeners, I know this section very well. It sort of <laughs> reminds me, whenever I played it, it always reminded me of 1930s cabaret. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's a really fun part. And Zach, how about you? Um, you know, I'd say my favorite would probably be Odaleli, which is our uh, Yemenite piece. Um, I think it's just, you know, so beautiful that we get to represent, you know, the culture and the diversity of, you know, the Jewish diaspora and specifically with Yemeni people because they have such a distinct um, cultural background. It's so um, beautiful getting to share that with um, the audience. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and OK, so there's Chai, but there's also something really new happening this year at the pavilion. Uh, there's going to be a pre-show for Chai. Uh, what can you tell us about Kadima? So we're getting to share the stage with the Kadima Dance Company, uh, also from Winnipeg, also doing Israeli dance. Um, I'm very excited that we get to share the stage and the audience gets to see something during the breaks as opposed to nothing. So mm. that's it's it's great. They're they're great. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, so in addition to seeing Chai, people can get some great food as well. I have fond memories of eating kugel and strawberry jam during the breaks when I was, when I was in Chai. Uh, but there, there is food that people can have at the pavilion. Can you talk of, just touch on some of the foods that people can enjoy while they're watching the show? I have to mention the spinach horns. <laughs> it's, it's like... It's like Spanakopita, but just better. Uh, if you stop by the Israel Pavilion, you must try a spinach horn. They are the best thing on the menu. Others may disagree. It's the best thing on the menu. Fantastic. <laughs> mm. uh, can you talk, briefly talk about the Sabbath and how that's going to work for uh, Friday and Saturday shows? What's that going to look like? Sure. So um, the Jewish Sabbath uh, starts uh, sundown on Friday night and ends at sundown on Saturday night. Um, and so um, our pavilion won't be holding any shows during that time. So to accommodate that, we have um, two early shows on Friday. So one at 5.15 and 6.45. And then on Saturday, um, we have two later shows, one held at 9.45. And then the last show of the week is uh, at 11.15. Um, and this one is actually a really Really special show because we uh, we're not we don't have our uh, traditional time constraints so we can do a little bit of a longer mm -hmm. show um, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun to end the week in that way. Yeah, yeah. And for our Classic 107 listeners, if you go to classic107.com, in the article that you can find there, I've embedded the show times for the Israeli Pavilion so you can figure out um, how working around the Sabbath that way. Uh, this has been really wonderful to have all four of you here. I'm going to wrap up the conversation uh, by asking what you hope audiences will take away from the show after they've seen it. I'm going to start on this side of the room. Zach, maybe I'll start with you. Um, you know, I hope people take away... Um, you know, the uh, joy and dedication that we've put towards, you know, representing the uh, culture um, of the Jewish diaspora. I hope they, uh, you know, I hope they, they have fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Samantha, how about you? Yeah, I hope they're able to kind of get a taste of what Chai has been doing for the past 60 years and is, I hope we end up with some new fans for our 60th show. <laughs> um, yeah. Mm, Braden? I want people to see how we represent uh, Israeli culture and Jewish culture and all of its diversity, um, and hopefully to be inspired to see a lot of other shows during Folklorama as well. 
um, because there are some amazing things around the city, not yeah, just us. Absolutely. And Sarah, how about you? Yeah, I, I really think that um, the music and dance and art, it really speaks for itself. And sometimes when you can't articulate yourself with words, you have to let the art speak for itself. And I, I really think that that um, that is one of the ways forward. And um, I just, uh, yeah, I hope it, I hope it um, inspires our audiences to um, appreciate the culture maybe in a way they didn't before or learn something new or um, just generate some more mutual understandings and, and celebrations of our culture. Fantastic. Sarah, Braden, Zachary, and Samantha, this has just been so great. All the best this week at the Israeli Pavilion. Uh, I'm going to the Friday night show at 645. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, thanks for taking the time to stop by the station and uh, talk to me today. It's been wonderful. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thanks so much. Yeah.